way too. Yeah. All right, oh, that's great. Yep. <laughs> it, you know, it could be, I'll tell you, Amy, the same thing happened to me. I've really started playing with Blab for a bit, uh, the last week. And Dr. Schiller, thank you for asking your question because we'll answer that in a moment. Um, I was showing somebody who was with me in my home what you could do with Blab. I actually touched my screen, reached out and touched the screen, and it began a camera alert because I have a touchscreen laptop. It was like, oops, I didn't want to do that. And uh, so the host was about to add, add me on. I removed myself. But again, uh, you know, you have the power. We're all learning with this new platform. So yeah. to answer Dr. Schiller's question too, um, which is great, we do teach people how to use Hangouts. And we still think Hangouts and Hangout webinars are king. We're not going away from that. Uh, but the thing about a live stream service like Blab right now is it's kind of easy to get people on spontaneously or even have a regular program. And like we're engaging with you right now, Andy, what brought you to our session today? What, br what brought you here? No, Andy, can you hear, us? Can you can hear, you hear us? us, Andy? I can hear you. It's kind of... Um getting a little oh, okay well i was wondering what brought you to our hangout oh, to our lab today see i'm used to saying hangout ah uh, okay well i really want to um create a webinar and um i'm not quite sure what the topic mm -hmm. is so i'm having a hard time getting started with step one creating the outline because my business is in personal development personal transformation and it could go in like 10 bazillion directions. And so I'm, you know, I'm hoping that yeah. um, my predicament is one that maybe a lot of other people have in how to actually choose the topic. Yeah. Now, I know some people have, you know, really specific businesses. Mine feels kind of broad. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it comes down to creating a framework. Like, you, do you work with one on one clients? I do. Um, I, I guess the reason why I'm interested in getting into webinars is is because I actually like teaching, yeah. and so I like that the vehicle of using the internet to get more exposure, not of just me, but that I could reach more mm -hmm. people. Um, I was doing the one-on-one -on -one client thing, and I still do, but I've actually reduced my clientele because I want to spend more time developing. Line. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why I ask is, I mean, like I, I coach people one on one. Michael does. We all a lot of us do on this call. And I have several clients that I, I have walked them through. They want to build a course or a group coaching program. And I always like to say, you know, start with what do you what do you do with your one on one clients that get them results? Like are there certain techniques that you've gotten excellent results for? Try to create, if you can, a step by step framework or an outline of of the best techniques or the best steps that you've taken your clients through in order to get them those results, because those can that can be your framework that you then use for your webinar topics, for your online course. I mean, you could just literally take that process and, and break that down as much as you can. Now, I know some or some are easier to 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 do that with, as far as like some niches are a little cleaner and easier to do that with. But I, be, I guarantee there's been a few points or techniques that you've used that really have stood out as far as that really made a difference in my client. You know, those are great topics to not only teach on webinars at scale, but also to create courses or sell live trainings like we talked about at the top here. You can actually sell access to an actual webinar where you actually do a group coaching and teaching session. Like, and yeah, that works great, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's helpful. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I would just spend some spend some okay. time with that and break that down, come up with a framework and then and then just go out, you know, get some feedback on that framework, share it with your buddies or a few friends. Um, and that could be the foundation of your entire business. Your framework is really like is really your strategic yeah. plan, right? Like it's it's what you teach off of, what you get people results from, you know, both one on one or in group coaching or mm -hmm. through information yeah. products. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to add to Andy, and this is a really great topic. It could all you can also think about it as your signature system. What is your signature system, and what is the transformation or result that the person that goes through your signature system is going to achieve? Because you really want to speak to the solution, the pain resolution uh, for whatever your clients or your your perfect prospects would would want to have solved. 
and your signature system is going to get them there. Now, one of the things to think about too, and I know it bring up, we have a lot of coaches in the audience. I'm a certified professional coach too, and this is something, and I see Roger's gonna join us in a moment, which is great if you can figure out the camera thing. Um, and, uh, which is to think about the fact that, um, you, you know, a, a lot of us get hung up on our process. If we've gone through training, we're experts at a process. Most people who want to invest in an online program care less about the process than about the result they're going to achieve. Your process, we may know our process is really brilliant and will help, but it's really important that you break it down into steps that show results for each step of your system so it's clear. Uh, what you know, what your your uh, the course attendees will course. achieve. Yep. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. I it hope all, that was helpful for you. It all starts with that, and then you just build from there. Webinars are a tactic, right? You need the strategy first, right? What's the strategy? What's who do you want to work with? Who do you want to be known for? Where do they hang out? You know, all these questions. Develop a framework of some of your best techniques. And then you could go, go share those and then it'll make sense because when people attend a webinar on a technique that you've found successful, it makes sense for them to take the next step for you into a coaching relationship or a product. You know, it has to kind of line up. If you just do a bunch of random topics with webinars, it doesn't really line up as well. You know? so, right. Yeah. But anyway, cool. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Yeah. It was awesome. Do you, have, do you have any other questions or? Um, um, no, I'm good. I'm ready to. Ready to rock. It that you guys are going to cover with others. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you Annie. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. All right. So Roger looks like he's having some camera issues too with the lab. Lab is in beta. Um, to answer, um, who is it? Dr. Andrew, or he, I think he says to call me, call me Andrew. Um, Andrew, um, Blab and Webinar Jam, we use Webinar Jam for all of our, our, our programs. Uh, we, that's our primary tool. And it works uh, way better for getting people on something because Blab is just new right now. So if you're if you're hosting a webinar, um, I would use something like Hangouts with Webinar Jam. Um, if you're looking to just have a nice open Q and A thing, this is work. This works well because I can't screen share on this. I can't put put a call to action button on the screen here. If you're doing a sales webinar or interviews, Google Hangouts <laughs> with Webinar Jam is way way better in my opinion, and Michael would probably agree than Blab right now. Blab is new. To give you some perspective, we emailed a, a part of our list that was about 2,000 people to, to come to this. And I think we had 41 signups or 42 signups from that. When we emailed that same segment of our list for a webinar, like using Webinar Jam, we usually get between 150 and 300 people sign up. So you can get a much bigger crowd. Um, Blab is just new, but it's fun, and we're playing with it. We're having a lot of a lot of fun with it. So, Roger, can you can you hear us? I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? We can't see you. You're a man, the man, the mystery man, right now. I, <laughs> I'm I'm working. I'm going to try to actually kick myself out, and I'm going to see if I can join you from my well, phone. When, when I I got out of Chrome, Roger, and went to Firefox, and then when I was in there, I got a box that came up that actually gave me a choice to select my camera and microphone. So I don't know if that would happen with Chrome too, which just was an accident, but just a heads up. That's yeah, what, it's funny. I'm on that's what solved I'll the pop, problem for me. <laughs> I'll pop off and see if I can jump back on. Let's All do right. it. Let's Sounds do good. it. Let's that's do good. it. So, awesome. Yeah, we're we're happy to have others, um, you know, you know, come on as well, certainly. And, uh, and, uh, oh, okay, great. So I'm being asked by um, somebody in the group, thank you for your question, uh, in terms of the camera. Well, John has the same camera and microphone set up that I do, he just couldn't select it right now. He wasn't given that option. Yeah. So I'm, I'm using for the camera, the Logitech C920 um, high def. Uh, and I, for my microphone, I'm just using the Audio-Technica 2100, you know, ATR 2100. It's a great USB microphone. Both of these, we actually recommend it to people using Hangouts. I'm using all the same equipment right now that we use for a Hangout broadcast that we're using for Blab. If you could get it to integrate, it, we will. I figured it out, John, so we'll be able oh, to do it in the future. Oh, well, that's what I'm saying. It just it gave me a dialogue box when I came into Firefox, so I'm just going to use that in the future uh, unless I can make it work with Chrome. So um, I got a yeah. separate dialogue box. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on Chrome. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it gave me a, a selection. So hopefully that'll uh, answer your question. But the other thing about the clear, the clear speed, and here comes, here comes Roger now. Yeah, the Roger. other thing about the clear speed, uh, the clear image, is I'm hardwired Ethernet connected. Makes a big difference when you're when you're live broadcasting to be hardwired connected if you can. Although I think with Blabs, one of the thoughts about Blab is that you could kind of travel with it because you actually can broadcast um, from your phone, et cetera. So, uh, you, you know, you, you might then be using Wi-Fi, but that's why I'm so clear right now. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, Roger he, may be outdoors. So, and he's coming in clear now. Yeah, yeah. He's got a yeah. Little, <laughs> outdoors. He's got a little screechy noise there, but it's, it's good there. We'll use that. Um, yeah, unfortunately, for whatever, I don't see how I can change my webcam because my, I'm not, unfortunately having to use my built-in webcam right now. My Logitech didn't show up when I entered, so. You know, Blab is in beta. Yeah, I didn't see any choice. It, there's no choice that I could find on selecting a camera. So Blab is in beta, right? It's new. It's it's going to have some things. But what's up, Roger? Roger's the Mr. Where, where you at? Uh, right at home right now. I just got home from a road trip last night, and now it's catching up on all the work. And, and funny, I was just looking. I was talking to Michael earlier. I was just looking into Blab and Periscope for a uh, a project that I have coming up. So when you guys were doing this this afternoon, I was like, I'm jumping on. I got to see what this blab is about. Yeah, yeah, it's about some cool stuff. It's fun, right? It's a lot of fun. It's it's very engaging. My ADD mind loves the like all the little images and things going on around you. You know, it's like kind of intriguing that way, right? I love it, and I mean, I think you know, going with what you guys are talking about today, you know, using something like a webinar to create a product in less than 30 days. I mean, uh, Hangouts for sure but even seeing things like this like the fact that you're recording this you can go to your your audience teach them things have the recordings i mean you can build a course from what you're doing on your blab i mean and and more importantly getting that feedback you know um um oh sorry well, who'd you who'd you just have on taylor last name uh any any Annie? Annie, yeah. Annie, you know Annie asked the question that i think almost everybody stumbles on when it comes to creating a course you know i can do so many different things i have so many ideas i have so many good things i want to share where do i start what do i even do and it's like i mean start up a blab jump on get some people and pick you know select the top five topics you think you want to talk about yeah. start talking about it. yeah see what people say see what people resonate with and and, and go from there because you're going to see some people won't care about one topic, but all of a sudden you're going to talk about something that's going to get people sharing it, going to get them talking about it, going to get them giving you props on your blab, you know, and, <laughs> and people are going to resonate and ask questions. And now you've got your next webinar. Do a webinar, answer those questions. Yeah. 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 And I know um, Marenko asked, how do, you, how do you create a web, an online course using webinars in 30 days? So, I mean, that's kind of the topic. And we did talk about it at the top of the hour, but for those who maybe joined us a little late, Roger, you're, the, you're, you're, the, you're a master at that as well. Maybe you want to want to share a few tips on how to create a webinar, uh, you, create a course with webinars? Yeah, well, why don't I give a, a quick example while I'm on here of just what I'm doing right now? Um, you know, we took, um, we, we did the, exactly like what I just said. We, we did a few Q&A web, webinars with one of my clients who's an expert in the health industry. And we just started doing webinars, seeing who showed up for what topic, who showed up for and, and asked questions and engaged. And we ended up do, seeing the same questions coming up over and over again. So we realized, you know what, that is probably the topic yeah. that people wanna hear about since that's the questions they're asking. Put on a webinar and we just answered those questions. And the beautiful thing about a webinar is you get to answer people's questions immediately. They don't need to download a bunch of videos. They don't need to wait a bunch of time. You get on, you answer their questions. So we did it. It blew up and people were excited about it. And all we did at the end of the webinar was just like what you guys say, you know, we took the webinar content that we trained and we thought to ourselves, what questions come up when people hear this? What could they want to go further in? So because it was, you know, dealing with health and nutrition, we realized people, they need more than the information. A lot of people go, well, how does this apply to my situation? What exactly do I make? How do I cook the meals? So that's all we did. We did the webinar. And then at the end of it, we said, hey, if you want to go further, if you want to be part of a group that will help you keep accountable. You want specific recipes and meal plans and exercise plans for you based on what we taught. We've got a, a, a live training coming up. It was exactly, you know, it was another webinar 
where we're going to go more into detail of this and give you those downloads. We did it. It was a huge success. I mean, we went from, like you guys say, it's funny, in an idea to the product. In 30 days, we did 10,000 in sales on our first two webinars. And it was a huge hit. And just by doing delivering this live training. Mm -hmm. And the most beautiful part of this is if, if no one showed up and no one bought, if no one raised their hand and said, I want to go further, we didn't waste any time creating a course, setting up a website. We would have just gone on to the next idea. But what happened were people did raise their hand. People did say, I want those recipes. I want those meal plans. I want that information. I want to go deeper. And they raised their hand and they bought. And so what we did from that, we got that feedback. We were doing this live training. It went really well. So we decided, you know what, let's make this thing evergreen. We took the recording of the webinar. We turned it into an evergreen webinar, just took the recording and made it where anybody can sign up at any time. They can watch that free webinar. The free webinar sells them the recorded webinar. It's like a two hour training. And we have this thing priced at a premium level in the health niche. This is a, a $200 American and I'm in Canada here. So our dollar sucks. Right no, now. No. It's like $300. <laughs> and it's, it's, so it's a $200 product in the health and wellness niche. And this is, I mean, for a two hour training with some downloads, some some recipes, some meal plans, some exercise plans, but it specifically addresses and answers people's questions. And I think that's the power of what you're talking about, where you can turn webinars into products. This isn't a 80 video, you know, 20 hour course that people need to go through. This took their questions, answered it. We've now got it evergreen. We just set it up two days ago. We've already got a few thousand dollars yeah. running through this thing, and we're just about to set up the ad campaign to, to push people to it. So, I mean, yeah. never take the time to, to ahead of time, test yeah. your idea, test your product, do a webinar. And if it works, just yeah. let people keep buying it. There you go. There you go. That's beautifully said right there. Nice story. Yeah. So you, you, you're hosting a couple of pilot webinars or one or two free webinars. And then from those gathering feedback, gathering data, creating the next webinar, on that next webinar, you sell access to a live training, which is in the form of another webinar. People will pay you $200. I mean, it happens no problem or more yeah. in certain niches to yeah. attend a live intensive. Um, it, it's a great model and it, it saves you a ton of time and guesswork, a ton of upfront expenses because you don't need the fanciest bows on your first iteration of your course. That's one of the biggest things. I've seen people who pay people five, $6,000 to create their course. And that's great for the guy who made the course, but that's not necessarily great for you because you don't even know what to sell yet. <laughs> yeah, right. We've yeah. all screwed up. And so. I've taken the months and months to build the fancy thing. And, you know, people think that, you know, your theme and the, the, the technology, and that's what people are buying. You know, it's funny. Um, the, the comment that I just saw where it's like, did I hear that right? $200 for a two hour training with some downloads. Absolutely. And, and well, I will add the caveat to that, that they also get a private Facebook group and community, which by the way, if you're not doing that on your products, yeah, it's probably the best thing you can do. But honestly, don't think of it as just a $200 training with some downloads. The fact that it's only two hours is actually nowadays more valuable than if it was 20 hours because people have a specific problem that they were looking for an answer for. And in that two hour period with those downloads, we solve it for them. Yeah. We answer it. They can immediately take that and go and transform their lives. Absolutely. And that is huge, huge, huge impact. And so people are happy to pay it. And in yeah. fact, um, and this is, I'm not going to get into it because, you know, I can go on for an hour just on this alone. We actually let people pay only $1 to access the training. They get to watch this training, download everything, download all the recipes, meal plans, everything they need. And then afterwards, they get to decide if they want to pay or not. Yeah. They get to, and they get to literally have it. They almost get nothing else but the Facebook group for continuing and paying. And we almost get nobody ever cancel it. And the only people that do cancel it is because they have some weird allergy yeah. or specific thing that just makes it too hard for them to follow. Yeah. So, I mean, just think about how can you get the questions that your audience are asking, answer them, and yeah. you will you'll make it all right. Yeah, and you can extract that information through these free webinars. Um, and we'll answer the question, how to get people, because that's a question. How do you get people to these first few webinars? That's a good question. Uh, let's take on Arias for a second, though. Arias, man. Yeah. Arias was in one of our courses that Roger, I, and Michael did. 
Nice he to can, see you, Arius. And, and he can speak for that model, but how you doing, buddy? Excellent. I'm just on just testing the system to see how it works. It's my first time being, I've watched Blabs before, but I've never actually been a part of a Blab. So thank you for having me. Yeah, I love the cloud behind you too, man. Give Arius props. <laughs> not bad. We lot. also want to thank Arius for solving I the problem in Chrome because others have brought up that that seems to be working too. Great. So great. he gave us the fix. So because uh, I do prefer to use Chrome because we do use Hangouts, so we're yeah. in we're in Chrome quite a bit. So that's where I am. But anyway, Arius, what's your question or thought? No question, really. Just coming on just to say, hey, test out the system and see how it works. Really, um, I'm just. Uh, very, I will say this, um, you know, taking your training and your mentoring has really put me on the fast track with webinars and doing a lot of things with my joint venture uh, launches that I'm doing. So a uh, huge shout out and thank you to uh, Michael and John for, and Roger, because yeah. you did the training as well. So thank you so much for the excellent training and mentoring. It's just um, done wonders for my business. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on oh, with the great. kind Well, words. thank you for that. I like Blab even more now because we've got a spontaneous <laughs> testimonial. Yeah. The, 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 the checks in the mail or is... Right, right. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're going to work on... He's a plant. Huh? But, uh, that's happening, but thank you. But, but let's get serious for a moment. I do want to say that this, you know, again, we're saying this is all great. I'm going to bring it back. We're have fun. But, uh, you know, but just... You know, many people that are watching, I know that your subject matter expertise, you have subject matter expertise. I want to go back. Many of you have stuff in, in already in your arsenal, your library, whether you've written a book or you've thought about writing a book and you have chapters of an unpublished book or you have articles that you've written or you've had blog posts that you've made. You've got material to pull from that can start to really develop your course. So when Roger says, oh, we hold a webinar and then less than a week later, we run a course and we do this for some people who like to be a bit prepared, maybe not perfectionists. I'm a, re I'm a reform perfectionist. We <laughs> want to have something. And you can, you can have something because you've been doing research in your area, you know your stuff. So it's not as difficult to put together where I think people need to not get hung up on is making it look perfectly beautiful when you first launch. Because when the beautiful thing about hosting a live course the first time with a live group of people is you're then teaching live. So you're doing everything on the fly. You could do a screen share if you do it with webinars with Hangouts. You have those recordings, then you can make it pretty afterwards and then repurpose, okay? The idea is to deliver value, get people taking your stuff make tweaks to it because you'll learn from the first time you teach even enhancements that you can make. So there's future bonuses that you can offer. You know, even Aureus, who's been with us for a little while, knows we're always throwing something new out there, right? So it's not about staying static with what you have, at least we try to. So so don't get hung up on be having everything all perfectly laid out. But I understand people who are nervous who think I don't have it yet to be able to launch. Get making some money. The first time out of the gate, Maybe you make a thousand or two thousand dollars, but you know what? That's a thousand or two thousand dollars more than you would have had if you waited another six months. So, yeah. and you know, Michael, on, that's so. more than most people make online. Uh, well, it, it is. It, it is. It, it is. validates your idea. It validates your idea that you can then repurpose into a course. If people are willing to pull out their wallets and pay you for a course or an idea, which is basically a live training, you know that there's a, there's at least somewhat of a market for that. So. I know Tiffany, Rianne, uh, great question. Uh, guys, if you want to use, uh, there's a questions box, there's a questions column on Blab. If you click on that, you can actually put your question as a question. It's easier for us to find because if you put it in the mainstream, uh, it, it can get kind of lost a little bit. Um, but and, she asked, there is a there is a shortcut way to do that too. If you do right. forward slash capital Q and type your comment, it will show up and populate in questions as well. So forward okay. slash Q will also Q. work, but you can go to the questions column, yeah. just as John said. So, so Tiffany, she asked, she, she created a course with 17 webinars with leaders in her subject and it flopped. How can we revive it? Well, there's a lot you could look at there. I mean, it could be, I would have to, there's a lot of questions to ask around that as far as the message, the offer, the copy, the, the and all of those things. But, um, but yeah, I would, I would, I would look to that. I don't know, Roger. Do you have any thoughts on that? I know you smiled on that. So. Yeah, because I kind of went through something similar before, so I completely get what Tiffany is saying. You know, when I hear that, and I've seen it happen a bunch of times, a lot of times when people do interviews, and it's a great idea. I'm putting something together for a course very similar. But a lot of times, interviews are filled with um, 
fluff. And I don't mean that like they're bad interviews, but I mean, you get into the story behind things, what they feel about things. There, there isn't always a specific outcome. So the problem when a lot of people put a course together using interviews with a bunch of experts is very often there isn't just a very specific outcome that people can get. They have to go through hours and hours of interviews to try to find the specific answers they're looking for. So what I would, my initial instinct, and again, like you said, you know, Tiffany, we'd need to hear more, but my initial instinct would be actually take those interviews, repurpose them as free content to help you gain more of a, an email list and drive traffic to yourself. You can do that by just sharing them separately, getting the people you interviewed to share them as credibility pieces. And what I would do is put together a separate training, which you will then make your course, which is the number one question, if people watch all that training, what's the number one problem that you think they still have? What's the reason why they're not implementing? Create a two, three, four hour training that addresses that specific problem. Make that your course. Make it a webinar that people need to pay for and, and you'll probably get a lot more success. Even though it seems like, well, there's so much value in having those 17 interviews for a course. Again, people right yeah. now, especially nowadays more than ever, they're looking for, I wanna buy it consume it and have an outcome immediately. I don't want to spend a week going through it, sifting the information. I want you to do that for me. Yeah. So that's what I would do. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on how it's presented, right? People don't want 17 interviews. They want their problem solved. So always remember that. And the quickest and easiest way to deliver that is the best. <laughs> you know, if you could do it in 15 minutes, if you got them a result, people would line up to buy your course. So um, anyway, uh, Arias, do you, do you have any other questions? Or I can let you go if you want. You're always welcome. There's an X in the in the corner you can hit to, to drop off if you want. Or... Actually, I stayed on because I have one quick question. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, please. After your nurture sequence and you, you know, you deliver your nurture sequence. Sorry, I have a call coming through if you can hear that. Sorry. Um, basically, my question is, how do you, where do you come up with your um, email ideas after that, after your nurture sequence? What do you use to, as your like idea uh, generator for emails. Yeah. So, I mean, are you talking about the initial welcome email and a few of the first emails? So if someone opts in for a free offer, is that what you're saying? Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, I, so you, you know, nurture sequences, the welcome email, obviously you want to get them to know you a little bit. I like to put all my social media links in there. I like to, um, tell them what we're going to show them in that, in the follow-up emails. Mm -hmm. Um, and tell them what they can expect to get from us via email. So that's big. Um, and then, you know, of course, you can point them towards an offer. You know, if you have a lower to mid ticket offer, you can you can just tell some stories in the first few emails. Um, and then after that, it depends on your model. It really does. I mean, one of the things we're going to start doing is a lot more live webinars is, is something we're really considering. And so I may cut back on all of the automation and not worry so much about passive follow up more on just warming people up to who we are, giving them some value, and then inviting them via broadcast onto webinars. Now, if your model is to sell passively, um, then you would want to do what's called an engagement sequence. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's a great book on this called The Invisible Selling Machine by Ryan Dice. He talks okay. about that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use all of that stuff because I think there's a certain line to walk between scarcity and hype and actual directness and marketing. So there's two schools of thought. One is Let's maximize how many clicks I can get in this very moment. The other one is the long game where it's like, I'm not going to bullshit people and hype, hype them around. I'm actually going to just tell them directly what the hell I'm giving them. And then over the long run, people will actually love you for that shit and not be like, you know, this guy's just trying to hype me up some bullshit clicks, you know? So I would, I would, you know, warm them up a little bit. Are you looking to sell something passively? Are you well, looking to, to just... What is your goal with that? My, well, my program that I have is the ultimate um, calm enhancement formula, and it's for my business center for calm enhancement. And um, initially, I'm just going to do actually I was going to do what a lot of people do, create this big, fancy um, membership website and then try that route. But when I took your training, I realized that, you know, doing the webinars and getting feedback was the best way to do it, you know, following your approach. So I thought yeah. about the idea of just basically doing the training and then just have it sort of like on evergreen. But um, I'm really liking what you just said about doing more live engagement. That sort of resonates with me for some reason. So now you got me thinking, you got the, uh, the gears moving. <laughs> it depends on your model and what you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, go ahead, Michael, sorry. 
Yeah, you know, you know, I was I was going to say it does. It depends on your model. And again, it doesn't have to be in either or. And I think, it, you know, running a successful business is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So and I think the way to keep ourselves energized as we do this is to drink plenty of water, which is why I have my water bottle <laughs> yeah. now. But also also to, uh, you know, really think about what is energizing you, you know, for us with Hangout webinars, boy, we got sirens somewhere. <laughs> um, Roger. We, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, but let's say Joyce would be outside. We like to have Hangout webinars in order to live or even using Blab right now because we enjoy the engagement. We enjoy the interaction, answering questions, being mm -hmm. helpful. It's very energizing. I don't know about if any of you in the audience have done live speaking engagements. I a lot of my business has been folk, you know, has been focused on live speaking engagements. I'm very privileged to be able to go around and speak to groups of caregivers. Okay. I buzz after speaking. Okay. When we do live sessions and we know we've hit it home and somebody has taken action and really gotten delivery with that, you get a buzz. So again, you could do all those other things like Ryan Dice is suggesting, and he's a brilliant marketer, no doubt about it. But work where your energy is it's going to keep yeah. you going and be putting you in contact with perfect prospects some of whom will become paying clients and yeah. give you revenue so your ideas and your hobby turn into a business okay yeah. that's really what this is all about yeah it's, it's about it's about your your preference you know there's a number of ways to make it online sustainable lifestyle business it, it doesn't have to be funneling people through endless upsells and numerous side sales and endless funnels mm -hmm. You know, it can be something simple on the front end. I do recommend having some automated email follow up, but it doesn't have to be an elaborate thing. You know, I mean, it, it, it takes more work to get out there live, but that's what we love. I'm not my goal isn't to sit on a beach somewhere sipping pina coladas and smoking doobies. You know, like that's just not <laughs> my, my goal in this. Right. It wasn't like, my goal till you mentioned. Yeah. That. Well, not once in a while, maybe. <laughs> but um, but, you know, I want to help get out here and help people. Right. I mean, we're all passionate. All, all four of I know all four of you guys on here. We're all passionate people who want to help all these experts, all these people that are coming online. I mean, it's going to be these next three years are going to be an amazing transition. I was just talking with uh, I was at Brendan Burchard's uh, mastermind group. Uh, it was a $2,000 mastermind. And he talked about the statistics. I mean, right now, 25% of the world is meaningfully connected, meaning they could watch this. In the next three to four years, they estimate that 75% of the world is going to be meaningfully connected. I mean, there's going to be this massive influx of people coming online, and we all have an opportunity to help those people, to share our messages, to influence them, to become an expert online and, and scale and share our message with the world. It's just, it's just and now is the time to do that, you know? It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's well, funny. Thank you, you very know, much for your insights, guys. I'm going to sign off and I'll stay Yeah, on so we can bring another person in. Right, That'd be great. Right, Thanks. Yeah, nice seeing you, Aris. Bye. Nice seeing you, Aris. I think there's a common theme, you know, and, and even the questions that I've seen so far, people asking, you, how did you get people to your first webinar? How did you test your message? How did you find out what to do? You know, what do I email people? And I can't stress enough to people the power of just being yourself and giving value. I mean, you want to know, you want to find people for your first webinar, join a couple of Facebook groups, go in there, questions that people are asking and answer them and be yourself. Don't try to answer them in a fancy way. Just answer them in an honest way. Give value. Don't expect anything back. Give that value and people are going to respond to it. And the kind of people that respond to it are the kind of people who are going to jump over and join you on your blab or they're going to join you on a webinar. And the same thing goes for your emails. A lot of people struggle, like, what do I sell with these emails? And they go through these books and trainings where it's like, you know, subtle mind tricks and NLP and what do I do to do that? You know what? Be yourself. Tell people about what's going on with you. Tell people about why you're doing what you're doing. And at the same time, make sure that there's some kind of value in your email. And again, by that value, you could, I'm the worst copywriter on the planet, <laughs> by the way i have trouble writing a three sentence he does, email. He does. Like, i can't say it right. <laughs> I, I, I i genuinely it's horrible. i love your emails dude but, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, my emails are the worst but they're they're honest they're me and people know that when i'm talking to them yeah. i'm coming from a place of value i'm in it just to try to help give value they sense that 
and people respond to it. So if you do that, you're going to get the same kind of results. You can go from nothing, no one on your list, no traffic, to in a couple of weeks, you could have people on your list just from going and giving value in some of these groups. Yeah. And really, it's and a big shout out to George Cow. Um, yeah, we, we, I want to give him. He just even just jumped into the the chat here. My, my business coach and good friend George Cow. He's wonderful. Um, yeah. yeah, talk about an authentic guy. And I think it, it depends. If you want to play the long game, right? We don't. We're not in here to get one more percentage on our click through rate, right? We're in here to help me play the long game and build our reputation, mm -hmm. right? Like a reputation is king, right? Getting on there, giving a lot of value. It, it, people will overlook all of the, that you didn't have the perfect polish or the perfect wrap on your course or the perfect email because they know you and care about you and they know you care. So that's that's the yeah. key. So anyway, hi, hi welcome. Hi. Uh, we, we, have, we have so many wonderful people joining us in the room too. I just want to give a shout out to the recent people like Tom and Julian and of course George and uh, the P3 Solution, others that are here. It's so great to see you. So anyway, uh, Barico. Yeah. Mariko. Hi, Hi Mariko. How are you? Great. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> nice, nice to meet you as well. Yeah. Do you have a question or? Yeah. So um, as far as like the best, I mean, your suggested use of Blab um, is just to kind of like to have this spontaneous Q&A, um, like being helpful, but you need to theme your, I mean, you, you titled your Blab something and because of that title, it draws people, right? So yeah. Um, yeah. So that title has to be, I mean, so you have to get to that core, uh, to, to that point at some point, right? And then um, uh, would, you, would you use this platform to sell, I guess, or, or to, to have, to invite people to a Hangouts? Is that your model that you're suggesting or? Um, well, we're just testing this for the, like one of the first times. You've only done a couple of these, so we're pretty <laughs> new at this as yeah. well. Um, yeah, the headline I think is important in using some hashtags in the headline, mm -hmm. um, just because that sells the attendance for those who don't know us. Some people are just gonna see us and oh, I know those guys, let's come. Um, right. But we're not necessarily selling anything here or anything, I mean, right. we're, we're, our website is hangoutsthatconvert.com. So for all for the 211 people who have viewed, viewed this so far, <laughs> they're gonna probably, if they wanna know more about us, go over to hangoutsthatconvert.com. You wanna know more about Roger DeVoe, go to rogerdevoe.com. Roger has courses and things like that. So it's kind of a soft promo thing and just building rapport. You can put links in the chat roll. Like we could put our link in there if we wanted, you know, or right. something. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, if you're gonna sell stuff, I, I like Webinar Jam Studio with Hangouts. Sure. It's, it's just way, it, I mean, like okay. I said, I don't know if you were here when I mentioned it. We emailed a, a list, a part of our list of about 2000 people for this. We had 42 signups for this. When we do that with Webinar Jam Studio, we usually get like between two and 300 signups, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's right. getting more people. On. It's just, it's a new platform, but it's a different yes. tool. It's a different right. tool, but it's fun. You know? but what will you do with the recording you get from this? I don't know yet. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm probably not going to do much with it, to be honest, because Michael right. and I are so focused on playing offense and doing a lot of live engagements. I'm not going to worry too much about the recording and putting that on right. YouTube and making the, the SEO perfect and all that stuff. Right. Like that. Right. And right. I make that for a few select videos, but I'm not, I probably won't do that for this. Uh, I just want I to see. just come live. Yeah. Um, you, you could. And these uh, numbers on yeah. the lower right hand corner, what does that mean? Like people just kind of like bubble on and what That's does that props. mean? That's props. props. So if people tap on your screen, like right now they're giving you props. It's kind of oh. like Periscope's heart. Is it like a high five? Yeah. I'm sending over like a high five. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. 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 Props. <laughs> props. 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 Props for everybody, guys. Props for Roger. Props for Michael. Let's get a bunch of props going around here. Thank you for all the love, everybody. Oh, look at all the love. Uh, uh, there we go. Yeah. Come on. We're, we're in a props you. contest. Uh, yeah. Come on. I want to win. You know, so. I want to win. Come on. There we go. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm right. Right. Yeah. Right, well, you can come up to us really fast. You're probably. Right. <laughs> but but I, I want to take Mariko's. I, I want to, uh, I want to take Mariko's question. The idea is use platforms that are meaningful to you. Like right. Periscope didn't resonate with me, even though Periscope, you know, was out before Blab. Because Periscope, I'm a talker. I can talk, but you know, to get in front of a group of people and mm -hmm. just talk, you know, without other engagement like we're having right now, real live engagement, we can rotate people in and out. We could do the same thing in Hangouts, you know? So um, to be able to have this type of engagement makes it so much more meaningful than just lecturing. I mean, I think if you're 
a big time business marketer or you're a Hollywood star or you're others to go on Periscope or just get on and chat. You've got this huge fan base and maybe they want to hear and every word you say they're riveted by. But to right. me, we learn and grow when we are social and we dialogue and we brainstorm and we collaborate. And I think this this platform, along with Hangouts, you have the ability to do that. The other thing I would say too, is we do have the ability to put links. I didn't do this, we didn't plan in this, but um, you know, we if people are interested in our webinar action guide, which has 18 tips for converting with webinars, again, I put the link in the chat roll, hangoutsthatconvert.com forward slash action, we'll get you that. So if you have a free resource or a lead magnet, you certainly have the opportunity to do this. I think that anytime you engage with an audience and people are resonating with you, you should give them the opportunity right. to learn more about you, connect more. Sure. Not to try to twist people's arms, just to give them the opportunity. So use that, use that as, a, as a chance yeah. to do, you yeah. know? So uh, great, yeah. Yeah, I think um, it's great. Go ahead, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask about that question. I don't know if you answered it, but so getting people onto your first webinar, because, um, I did a webinar long ago, but, uh, you know, it's been a very long time. And I'm just like, it's like the fear and intimidation factor and, and of like not having nobody on, you know, on the other end. And uh, um, how would you, I mean, I guess we teach this in your course, but what's, um, what in a, in a just quite quick way, um, how would you suggest getting started? Yeah, with yeah. yeah. So do you have um, a social media following? Yeah, I do. Like a decent decent one there. I mean, that's one way. You would just create a webinar, like on Webinar Jam Studio. Right. Right? You get a link to a registration page that you can share on social media. Right? So that's yeah. one way. You could share it if you have a Facebook group. That's another way. You can create an event in a Facebook group and share it that right. way. Um, right. I wouldn't recommend posting it in other people's groups unless you know the admin and they're okay. You could sometimes right. mention it in the comments section, but don't do like an individual post in other people's groups or they won't like that. Um, right. You know, if you yeah. if you if you're doing like anything with a partner, maybe like Roger and Michael and I, we did we did a thing together where we all had kind of our own followings, and then we all mailed to kind of one thing, right? Or we all emailed. So if you have an email list, of course, use that. Mm -hmm. If you sure. have a social sure. media following, use that. Um, you can use Facebook ads, but I wouldn't recommend that in the beginning unless you have extra cash that you're just wanting to throw at it. Um, right. If you're if you have a big budget, then you could look at that too. But right, um, right. Otherwise, I would just keep it with those things. Yeah. Right. And, Awesome. And I would I would also say don't be afraid yeah, to do a webinar okay. with no one on. I can't tell you the number of webinars <laughs> that I've done for myself. <laughs> or or two people and you're trying to make it sound like you, you've got a crowd and you're having fun. I mean, it's it's you've you've got to have those because that's what's gonna help you keep refining your message. And this is the thing that a lot of experts fall into trouble with. What the information that we have mm -hmm. can really help people. And we know that, but that doesn't matter. It only matters if we can let people know that what mm -hmm. we have can help. Them. If we can say it in a way that gets them interested enough to click a button. And this is why, again, I mean, I can't stress enough of the strategy. Go to your market, go find mm -hmm. the groups where they're hanging out. And like John said, don't post links to your webinar, but see what questions they're asking. See how they're asking it. You know, it never ceases to fail. A lot of my webinars and things I used to do, I would do it on the brain, building habits, how to build momentum. And time and time again, you'll see it in the comments of, of this blab we're doing right here. People ask about the technology. They ask about mm -hmm. the platform. They ask about right. those kind of specific things. So here I am telling people what they need on the brain side. And it wasn't until I got in and saw the questions that I realized, well, people don't really give a crap about what I'm saying. They need it, right. but they don't know they need it yet. They really just care about, you know, should they use right. click tunnels <laughs> or optimized press, webinar jam or easy webinar, Google Hangouts or Skype to do interviews. Like, mm -hmm. Those are the questions. So find those questions, do a webinar mm -hmm. on the little part. And in your webinar, you can then build up that knowledge of what they really need. Yeah. And okay. that could then become it's a beautiful model. for that. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Well, Rico um, has more props than all of us right now. <laughs> awesome. Uh, come on, I want to catch up. So, 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 so it's, time, it's time to replace Mariko with another no, audience. Oh, no. He's getting bored. Yeah. Um, no, so I just no. want to say that it's also questions. great. The, yeah, this platform yeah. is great because, uh, you know, in uh, I've been on a lot of, like, uh, conference bridge lines where you have to wait for, like, I don't know, like the whole entire call to just get your answer, uh, call, you know, your, your question addressed. And here mm. I can just, like, pop right on and, See everybody like you know it's such an intimate mm -hmm. um kind of exchange so that's really 
I, I have to say on the audience side, it's awesome. So anyway, yeah, thank cool. you for, yeah. Well, we're, we're very excited to have you here. Well, I hope you come back to future ones and we'll enjoy okay. checking you out as well. Okay. So, thank right. you. You can just, thank you so when you're ready, you can just ask her, you can ask herself out when you're ready. Right. I, I, I got her at the very end. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much bye. for coming. Bye. I, we did get a, yeah, hey guys, we did get a couple that. questions earlier in the in the chat that I just wanted to bring up, and one is the age old question that we typically get about the platform we choose for Hangouts. So I did want to answer that, and um, you know, uh, Tech uh, and Moose both asked this question um, in the chat. Uh, John and I, and I can't speak for Roger. I mean, we chose Webinar Jam over other Hangout premium platforms. We're both early adopters. Got it right from the beginning. Um, we just like the functionality of it and what Studio has done, um, you know, in addition, uh, you know, with the other features. But the bottom line with all this, Easy Webinar is an outstanding product. Webinar Ninja is an outstanding product. Okay, so it's really about what are you most comfortable with using if you're going to choose one. They're all priced relatively about the same now far less expensive than a go-to webinar service if you're going to do webinars and you have a lot more interactivity because you're using Hangouts. So it's really so it's really about your choice. I'm not going to do an editorial in terms of which is better and why. It's really about what you would get the most out of. But we have loved ourselves, all three of us that are still here, have used Webinar GM very successfully in our businesses. And it's been a real you know, real key for engagement. And uh, and there's so many things in terms of, um, you could do, uh, you know, pop-ins with offers. It has really engaging chat, a real easy way to bring people in on camera like we're doing here on Blab during a hangout. We can do that too. So so again, it's uh, in fact, I kind of look at Blab right now as a mini hangout in a sense, in that we don't have all the bills and whistles of registration pages and all the other stuff that you get, but we have the engagement and multiple people on camera. Yeah. I, I'm loving the blab so far. And I mean, I really want, you know, like you said, it doesn't, they're all similar enough. My first webinar where, when I was doing them and selling and actually making some money, I took the hangout because it was free <laughs> and I embedded it mm -hmm. into a WordPress page and I put the Facebook <laughs> That's what I did. underneath it, <laughs> all free. I mean, this is this is like yeah. it, it was ugly. It, it it wasn't exactly the most interactive, but again, and this is the main thing you should focus on: what we were teaching and what I was talking about was giving value. So people forgive the fact that it doesn't have a fancy, uh, you know, pop up chat and cool buttons and polls and downloads. People forgave that it, it really <laughs> it looked like crap, but it, it was giving them something they needed. So if you can really get down, like John talked about in the very beginning, you know, build out that framework of what are you going to do to give people value? What are you going to teach? The rest, it, it doesn't really matter. It just like Michael said, it comes down to what are you most comfortable with? And the most important thing is, is that you actually just yeah. pick one and do it. You can research these things till the cows come home. I'm still, I just picked up another platform for the next project I'm working on. I've probably used four different ones by now. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's, it's the important thing is that you pick one, you do it. And then for your next one, maybe once you've made some money, you can try the next one and see how that works for you. You can try click funnels or you can try optimized press. You can try lead pages. It, any one of them yeah. will do. What I, I think the do. tools somewhat matter but not as much as people think right it's good to keep an eye on that but with your extra time not your most important time you could give your tools yeah. add to your message your tools can yeah. add to what you're doing but if you have a crappy message and you haven't figured yeah. out how to deliver it yet i don't care how fancy your tools are you just yeah and you like to say i know love him or hate him you know in his prime you could have gave tiger woods the crappiest set of clubs in the world he would have still buried your ass on the golf course because it's not about the tool. It's you. <laughs> it's you. It's your presentation skills. It's the way you come across with people. It's the offer. It's the market. Do you have an offer that the market wants? Do you know your market? Do you know, you know how to price your offers? The core fundamentals of marketing still matter most. The tactics yeah. will always change, right? So there's marketing strategies and marketing tactics. And those, I think people get confused. They, they jump into the tactic. And I know I used to do this all the time. I learned a bunch of video SEO and how to do a bunch of crap. And like, 
I didn't have a, a congruent message that mattered. So I never got anywhere, you know? And so, yeah, that stuff still is what matters most. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's cool. awesome. Well, listen, I'm going to jump off guys and free up some space, but this has been awesome. And to everybody in the chat, I'm just seeing every, all the support and the, the props. You guys are all yeah. awesome too. So yeah. this was a we always enjoy hanging yeah. with you, Roger. And so. it's Ro Roger DeVoe yeah. at rogerdevoe.com. Yeah, Roger. That's, that's still your thing. All right. Thanks for Roger. Guys. Take care. Take care. We did get a question, John, um, in the chat about um, are you from Nancy Merland asking, are you then replaying those webinars at various times via Webinar GM, Webinar Express, or Stealth? Um, Webinar GM does have the ability, you can you know, definitely give the replays. In fact, uh, once people enroll in a, one of the courses that we put together, we use Webinar GM for the delivery of the course as well. People then get the replays automatically emailed to them. Um, right in their inbox. And then we just take those recordings, the webinar recordings that we have um, that are on YouTube. You could either take them directly from YouTube and populate them into your own WordPress membership site, you know, that's password protected, um, or, uh, you know, put them up on Vimeo. You could do whatever you want afterwards with those, with those video recordings. If you're looking Webinar GM and others now have an ever webinar or automated webinar system where you could then take that and then have them replayed on demand as you as you set up. So again, it's it's really a mix of both uh, that you can do. But if you use one of the premium services with Hangouts, you then have great flexibility with what you can do with those recordings afterwards. Yeah, yeah, it's very flexible with Hangouts. I think she might have been talking about ever webinars, evergreen webinars. And we got another question on that too. What's your view on automated webinars, yeah or nay? You know, I think it depends on your philosophy. We, ha I have built one. Um, it took a lot of like kind of tedious work because I had to edit some stuff. Um, we ran some ads at it and it didn't do as well as I would have liked. Um, I would say, yes, it's a good tool. I have a client that I helped actually build one and he has a pop-up on his website now that because um, people find his website um, they then take his automated webinar and he's, he's made some sales on that. So yes, you can take your, 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 let's say you're using webinar jam or stealth or whatever you can, you can put that on your website. I would recommend that versus you can run ads at it directly. I have tinkered with that. I'm not a pro at running face. I, I, I saw it at Facebook ads, but I'm not, a. I haven't run a lot of ad spend into an ever webinar yet. I didn't get the kind of results I was looking for. I'm getting better results running ads into what's called a self-liquidating offer where, where basically people would grab a free offer. I have a small product right behind that that's like $37 that basically a certain percentage will buy that pays for all of the ad spend. So you can actually get free Facebook ads if you set up what's called a self-liquidating offer uh, behind your lead magnet. So have a little offer that's $37 or something behind your, your lead magnet when you're running Facebook ads to it. Um, and if it converts well, if your copy is 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 doing is and the message is, is strong, it, it'll pay for all of your ads and then some. Um, but yeah, I would put your web, ever webinar if you're going to use that as a lead magnet, right? A webinar is a lead magnet. So um, if you have a put it on your website, you know, I would recommend that versus running ads right at it, at least in my opinion right now, uh, unless you have a huge ad budget and have an offer that, you know, just crushes it big time. I would not waste your money there, but you can use that on our website, which actually we should probably do that, Michael. I know I did that with my client. We haven't even done that on our own site yet. Um, Cause warm traffic <laughs> is more likely to buy. If people actually come directly to your website and yeah, then take true. your webinar. They're more likely to buy your product on an ever webinar. So yeah, it's a good tool. It's a good lead magnet and it can be a part of your funnel quote unquote, if that's what you're interested in. It depends on your philosophy. Michael and I like doing a lot of live stuff because we like people, right? We like to get in there live. And we like to get props and lots of props and, and, and have a good time, you know, with everybody. So, um, yeah. Michael, you still there? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely here. We got some other questions coming in too. I just uh, asked if people want to, with Webinar Jam, if you're getting another option, they have an ever webinar service, which is an add-on. Um, in terms of promotion for Webinar J, and then I'll let you, John, if you see Mariko's question, um, okay. you can maybe take that. Sure. Uh, uh, Jay had asked about how you, how far you out you promote for a webinar. It's best to promote not too far in advance. You know, people's attention spans. It's kind of counterintuitive. I mean, many of us who are busy people think that oh, you know, we'll, we're planning our our month out. You know, to so give people a month's notice or whatever. That really doesn't work. It seems so well for webinars. The shorter in advance you start promoting, maybe five days 
at the most, the better. And I'll tell you, one of the biggest things we've seen to get more people attending our webinars, especially live, is the last minute post. Yeah. You know, because if people are in the middle of doing something and you give them, so, so I'm not saying don't wait until just 30 minutes before your webinar to do your first post about it, but you'd be surprised how many people a day in advance or even just 15 to 30 minutes before a webinar will make a decision to join with that last notice. So really important, but don't start too early with the campaign. Um, you know, lead up to the webinar because it doesn't necessarily work. So uh, for folks that we've yeah. seen. Yeah, the shorter, the better for most markets. Now, if you're if you're targeting people that are working like busy professionals or something, maybe a little longer. But for if you're in like the marketing niche or in the health niche, um, generally, the closer you promote to the actual live date, the more people are going to show up live. So you'll actually bump your show up rate, which is how many people come up to live to your webinars, maybe 10% or more just by emailing closer and then having like 15 minutes before like you go live, like literally just program an email to go out to your list, you're gonna get at least 10% more people to show up to your webinar. Um, it works really uh, effectively. So um, what was the other question? Self-liquidating offer? The other question had to do with the self-liquidating offer, yes. What was it? I couldn't, I can't. Find it again. Then. Well, it, it Mariko asks, what's the price ceiling on a self liquidating offer? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, generally it's $27, $37, $47 in that ballpark. I mean, you could try a $97, but remember, these are people to cold, ice cold traffic. So you want to make it basically an irresistible offer. Maybe take one of your products that, or, or maybe create a video that solves a problem for them and make it a small impulse buy, like a $27, $37 product. You know, so basically people come in through your Facebook ad or whatever, they grab a free guide or free white paper or something, free video. And then on the thank you page behind that is just a, hey, thanks for grabbing the guide. It will be delivered to your inbox in just a few moments. But first I wanna tell you how you can grab, uh, have a one-time offer to grab one of our best performing products at a significant reduction in price. Tell them a little bit about the product. And then literally just have like a video and a buy button, not a lot of text or a long form sales page, just a simple setup there. And a certain percentage, if the headline is solid, if the video makes sense, and if the offer is, is in line with, with your lead magnet up front. Remember, we want them all to be linear, right? The ad needs to be look and feel the same as the free offer and the landing page. The next step in the funnel needs to make sense with the previous one. If you have all those things line up, um, you can set it up to where you could run Facebook ads into this, this self-liquidating offer all day long and it'll and as long as your cost per lead isn't isn't it doesn't get out of hand if you if you grow or scale your ads um you'll you'll get free ads and we just did this last month i think we spent not a lot maybe six hundred dollars i think what did we spend michael six hundred bucks or something on facebook ads and we generated uh, maybe a thousand dollars from that something like that right close yeah and it pretty Absolutely. much paid for all of our ads so uh, yeah we did it yeah. was really, yeah, it worked out very well. I'm sorry, I was just paying attention to the chat roll too, so as you were talking. So, um, but yeah, uh, it, I, I think that's a really good point. You got to think about cold, uh, you know, cold traffic and, and that lower price point because as John said, and I think it is a great idea to think about even doing with our site uh, about offering that the webinar once people are at the site um, to check it out. Because when you're running Facebook cold traffic to just get people to sign up for a webinar, I think is a really tough one. They need to get to know you first before they're gonna devote their time. I mean, and I'm grateful for the, those of you that are still here with us now over an hour, you're investing your time to be with us right now um, as, as we share, you know, as we share this information. But I did want to talk about for a moment questions that came in about Hangouts. If somebody did not have the money to invest in a platform right away, like Webinar Jam Easy Webinar, you could still do it the old fashioned way with Hangouts on air. Okay, just, you know, uh, send out an email invite, you know, get people to come to a dedicated place where you're hosting your Hangout on air, which you can host on your website even to or to a web page and do that and just you know again do that for free it's not the most ideal uh, because you don't have all the other bells and whistles but standard hangouts on air can work fine and you don't have to have people in the google plus platform hangouts on air is portable i mean you can embed it into your website you can uh even run google hangouts on air with a a um, social media app called 22 social on facebook so, I mean, you don't, so if that's where your audience is, you don't have to be associated with Google+. But again, we still believe 
if you want to run a viable business, it's worth the $400 that you could get, invest in a premium platform for a year. It should, you should recoup that. Yeah. You really should recoup that um, because you want to collect those registrations because people may not invest with you the first time they see a webinar with you. We have many return engagers that come back, but eventually some of them, the, the idea is to attract your perfect prospects and some of them will become ideal paying clients, clients and customers, okay? So we do, so if you just keep re-engaging, eventually some will go further with you, some will not. But you know, $400 uh, to me for, for a service that will give you everything that you need, you know, to me is a worthwhile investment. Yeah. But if you're really struggling at the beginning, Hangouts is portable. Yeah, grab something like 22 Social. Yeah. It's like 22 bucks a month. I think if you referred three people to it, um, I don't like it as much as Webinar Jam, but it is an option. You can actually host Hangouts on your Facebook page, and they can actually put a buy button underneath it and stuff. It's a little more, unless they've upgraded it. I haven't. We haven't played with it in probably six months or more. Um, but that is another option. Or like Michael said, you know, just put it on your web page, and then just set up like a, an opt-in page for that or something like that. Or you can use lead pages if you already have that as a free way to do it. Um, you can get something like Chatwing. If you have a, if you're a lead pages user and just embed that into your lead page template, there's a template for free in, 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 in lead pages. If you're already a subscriber, um, you can do it that way too. Uh, click funnels. If you're using that, you can host hangouts in there. Um, optimize press, any of those things. It's, it's getting easier because you can embed a hangout on air anywhere. Really? I mean, it's anywhere a video can be embedded. So yeah, you can find some cheap solutions, but there's a lot of pieces around it. You'll miss and, and having something like webinar jams puts the package all together and allows you to, um, you know, have the landing pages, the reminders, everything set up for you already. So you don't have to integrate and put a bunch of pages together, um, which takes a lot of time and your time is time is the asset, right? Like, uh, it's time is very valuable. So, um, all right, we got Peggy Lee coming on. How much, how you doing on time, Michael? I, I'm fine. I could stay on longer. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine staying too. I, I invite, a, Peggy, invite Peggy in. I did, so. yeah. Hey, I'm there. Hey, Peggy, what's up? All right, it's good stuff. Um, I just wanted to pop in and just see that I made it okay. <laughs> you did, yep. <laughs> so you, awesome. <laughs> Fun stuff, yeah, guys. So what do you what do you think? What are you thinking about this as a platform for engagement so far? You know, I really like it a lot better yeah. than the Periscope. Um, I've been on both. I've I've hosted a Periscope and had an absolute blast with that. And I can totally understand where you were coming, Michael, before when you said, you know, whatever gives you the most juice basically that lights up your fire um keep going with that but i haven't done that with periscope but i really really like this platform especially when anybody who wants to join in can just click and say you know please accept me you know will you can i just jump on and ask a question so i really like this idea and also the content once again you guys are bar none um, with everything and um, so thanks a lot for the day and I can pop off and oh okay yeah no, thank you so thank you for the, the, the kind words and yeah thank you for doing that. yeah I, I agree I, I think this is this is a great platform for large group Q&A like this for free open-ended um, I wouldn't use this for a sales webinar like that's the convert.com but we um, but yeah it's a cool cool tool definitely I like it yeah, yeah. all right yeah. thanks much bye Peggy I'm going to go ahead and guys, I'm going to go ahead and put in our, our URL one more time, Michael. I think that'd be fine, huh? Hangouts yep, to convert. I just did that. Uh, hangouts to convert.com. If you guys want to follow Michael and I, we, we have tons of webinar resources and different things there that you can grab. We teach, we have host a ton of webinars for free. We bring on guest experts. We do a lot of trainings. If you get on our email list, you'll hear about it. So DG, my man, what's up? We can't see it, but we, oh. We, we, we can, oh, there he is. Wow. Look at that. What's nice. All right. Hey. Yeah, well, what's up? To uh, kind of pick your brain on, I guess, sort of an extension of the concept you're talking about. So you were talking about hosting live webinars um, to sort of test concept, you know, test engagement, see what's resonating, and then pushing, you know, a couple webinars down the line to a paid webinar and a product, et cetera. And I'm seeing more and more people having success um, on the front end of even that when they're testing a new um business concept or product or a pivot 
they're starting instead of traditionally starting with a website and a podcast and all those things, they're kind of starting with a, like a Facebook group, right? Building a, building a community in a Facebook group and then using these live streaming platforms like Blab and Periscope and whatnot on a pretty regular basis to also build community, to build expertise, um, test concepts some more, right? Answer questions, you know, interact. And then from that Facebook group or on those live streams, sort of pushing to webinars or, or at least, you know what I mean? Like yeah. getting people into the group, et cetera. So building, building, building that way, seeing if it resonates before you spend time developing a website, trying yeah. to launch a podcast and all that, you know what I mean? And then taking it to a webinar, because if you send them to a webinar, then you're getting the opt-in, you yeah. are capturing the email, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a great model. And I think um, a Facebook group is a great thing to have. Like we have one, I think we have 500 members or something in it. Um, and we do uh, do that as well. Um, yeah, you could do that. And like, I like the idea of having an open group and then hosting like streams like this, or even hosting webinars to that group, right? So that you get those people onto your list. So I, I would say it's an important piece. Michael and I both like, we work on our Facebook group and stuff. Um, I wouldn't necessarily start with that. I think if you wanted to do the fastest route, um, it depends on your following and your list. Like if you have a, a Twitter following or a Facebook following, I would just go ahead up front. If you're just doing research on your market or you're going into a new market to find out what people want, just send them right to a webinar and get on there with them and ask them and poll them. You can poll them right on the spot with Webinar Jam. You can talk to them. You can ask them right on the spot. Maybe do one or two of those, depending on if you, if you have zero list, I would just start hosting a couple free webinars or do a few interviews to collect emails or have find a partner or an organization that'll host it with you that has a list that can maybe mail or um, share on their social following. See if you can collect maybe 100 or 200 emails or even less than that and then email those people to come back to another webinar and then you could sell access to your live training that you repurpose into a program. I would rather do that and then on the side build a Facebook group because Facebook groups are great for engagement, but I can tell you, I mean, let's just say this way. If you have a thousand people in your Facebook group and you hosted a webinar for those people, I bet you, you might only get 20 to 30 people to sign up. Mm -hmm. Right. If you have an email, if you have a thousand emails from an email list and you emailed them to come on your webinar, I bet you get at least a hundred. Unless, unless they're totally disengaged with you, you know, but I'm saying the numbers are stronger. So I would get out there with the webinar on the front end, get, get your feedback, because it's going to take time to build a Facebook group unless you just add a bunch of people without asking them, which I would not do. No. Um, yeah, I would I would say if you wanted to, if you were going to look at the 80-20 rule, like what 20% would give you the 80% of your results, I, I would do that after I did what we just, in my opinion, I don't know what your thoughts are, Michael, but uh, or, or DG, go ahead, but... Yeah, yeah, well, let's let DG respond to you first yeah, yeah. before I jump in. Well, yeah. To yeah, totally makes sense. And I, I would agree. I'm seeing that the people that are successfully building groups are doing it relatively slowly um, and are, you're right, getting, you know, they're decent sized groups and they're getting smaller, they're doing smaller webinars for sure. Like you're right, 30, 50 people or whatever, not, not bigger. Um, I totally get what you're saying. I think for me, I'm in that instance where you're right. I, I don't really have a list as of yet have a moderate social media following. So it's that same question, chicken and the egg of sort of how to build the email list. You know what I mean? Build the email yeah. list to then yeah. um, get people to the webinar. Yeah, I mean, I would just, I don't know if you have how big your social media following is, but you could talk, you could share there. I mean, I would start your own Facebook group. That's a good way to start gathering up some people around your brand. And then of right. course it makes sense for you to promote your webinar in there. Um, who in your industry would maybe be interested in partnering with you? Yeah, you know that's a big one. Make a list of ten people, you know, or more uh, in your industry as to maybe, and not just your Uncle Joe or something, but people that are have a little influence or maybe have a group or or offer to do a do a do a free training for another group. I mean, I've done that several times, right? Like I'll come on as a guest in a mastermind group or um, in another Facebook group or to somebody else's list, um, which is the best, right? The email is like you'll add. We've added hundreds of emails some weeks from doing joint ventures with people who are mailing to our stuff. Um, that those those are some good things. It that hard. It's hardest. It's the rocket ship model. It does take a little energy to get the thing to take off, you know. Um, but there's some ways to do it. I think that are better than others. I think webinars are great because they're a lead magnet on the front end. You can get people on. You can get them 
you get their contact info, you get to get on like this and talk to them and look at them in the eyes, just especially like hangout webinars. Like I, I would prefer that over like the behind the slides the whole time model. Right. Um, I think it'll cut your know, like, and trust in half. And, and, and of course it depends on your back end goal. What's your goal for doing this? Are you looking to get clients? Are you looking to attract a, create a product? If you're looking to attract clients, then okay, you need to make sure you have your framework for what you're gonna do with those clients nailed down so that you have your webinar topics that line up with what you're gonna offer at some point, you know, so. Um, awesome. Yeah. That makes, that makes sense, man. Thanks. Thanks for the yeah. feedback. And, yeah. uh, and I'm loving the blab. <laughs> cool. well, we're happy to have you here. So I didn't even need to jump in. I think you guys exhausted the conversation. Sorry. Really yeah. well. so, <laughs> so give, so give John and DG the props Woo! on that one. I don't get All the props. Right. So props, props, John props. Michael so. too, though. Michael too. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Boys. Yeah. Sorry. Right. So we get, we get the feet, but thanks for stopping by. We really thanks, appreciate man. it. We'll see you. All so, right. Thank you. Um, in terms of some other questions that are coming in, Mariko really couldn't answer the question now in terms of what is the best time on Blab to have a health summit, because Blab is really so new <laughs> that it would be hard to judge in time. My feeling is with even Hangout Sessions too, do your webinars when it makes sense for you to do them and the partners that you bring in to, if for interviews or others, you know, as John said, one of the great things we did initially was to bring in other subject matter experts to interview. Um, and I've done that in the caregiving site too, because you're really tapping into their audience, but you're having a dynamic dialogue. So make it work for you and your partners. The beautiful thing about webinars, you want people to show up live, but they can be replayed. You know, and the other thing we didn't talk about today too, we talked about how to use webinars to create a course, you know, in, in 30 days, which you can do. Webinar strategy is to think of it as a campaign. It's not a discrete event, okay? So we're not using this blab as a campaign right now because we're just experimenting and jumping in and doing this. But if we were doing a webinar, there's the build up to it, there's the doing it, and then there's what you do with it afterwards. Because one of the things that happens is people get really disappointed when they host a live webinar, they have a group that shows up and maybe they don't make any sales or maybe they make one or two sales. You can actually make more sales after the webinar, sometimes a live webinar than you do during the live webinar, depending on how you position your campaign follow-up. And also build on the energy enthusiasm for the people who made the choice to invest and go forward with you in the program because and use other testimonials. There, there could be a great thing there too. So uh, be less concerned about the time of day than the overall campaign strategy and your messaging. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, what other questions do we got there, Michael? I mean, uh, let's see here. Yeah, yeah we guys, can, so we've been going on for a while, could probably, we're happy to have all these people on. Let's see, I think we've got most of the questions. Um, yeah, we've been here. on for a while. I mean, if you guys want, anybody else wants to jump on real quick? Uh, looks like we got Nancy wants to jump on. I mean, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm fine to hang out for a while. How, how's your energy? I'm fine. Think? I'm fine too. I'm fine too. Yeah, feel free to jump on. We have the slot. So, yep. Hi, Nancy. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. wanted to say I've really, really enjoyed your Facebook group and the program that I did, uh, Coaching Without Borders. Thank you. Um, I, I started with an e-zine, uh, totally a newbie for marketing online. <laughs> I'm changing from 40 years as a dressmaker, getting ready for retirement. So I don't want to be tied to my basement, <laughs> which yeah. is what dressmaking is all about. You're tied to a location. So we, we decided, my husband and I, that we wanted to go online so we would have portable income. And he's a musician. So... He's, he's a natural to figure out something he wants to do online as well. But um, what, one of the things that I have found, uh, because I started with the easy and it's a really odd, odd direction to start. And then I knew I love teaching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love coaching. I was actually a, um, a gymnastics coach. I have a degree in phys ed. You can tell I'm older than I look because of all the things I've, I've done in my past. But what, what we're looking at is... Um, just reminding people that to build a really good audience takes time. Mm -hmm. You can build um, a non-engaged list real fast. There's yeah. lots of ways. I mean, I've been studying marketing now for quite a while, and I've gotten into a mastermind. And I just saw Nancy was, Merlin was, uh, things in the chat about a mastermind. Uh, we were just all in a program together. 
And one of the girls said, gee, we should form a mastermind. <laughs> and yeah. she just put it out there and eight of us hopped on and said, yeah. And we've been meeting once a week, supporting each other. And um, we're in eight totally different industries, completely different. And yet we understand each other's. Uh, one had worked for months with a coach who did not understand what she wanted to do. And the rest of us, Got it. We huh? caught on immediately yeah. to what she wanted to do. And cool. she said, oh, okay, I feel validated. And away she went. But it's um, it takes a long, long time to build a really good, yeah. small niche oh. Nancy? audience. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. You yeah. cut out for a second. Yeah, did you, have, did, you have a, did you have a particular question or anything that you'd like to chat about? Or you just well, wanted to check I, this out? I, I was really, I, I actually tried uh, experimenting with Blab a little bit, um, but... I haven't done anything regular with it. And I love the idea of coaching. I wasn't sure how I wanted to coach till I did your coaching with borders, without borders. Yep. And the idea of using the hangouts for coaching, because to me, I need the visual to mm -hmm. do a really good job of coaching. Mm -hmm. I like the visual, especially when I'm working with women. But I, I really am, um, I'm finding it hard because I'm right at that point where I'm getting ready to do my launch of my program. And there's just so many things all at once. Mm. <laughs> so how would you do a, a an actual launch would mm -hmm. you start with the webinar or like like where i have a small list and yeah I have a small <clears throat> social following but they're they're mm -hmm. who i i want <laughs> yeah yeah so you're talking about just a product launch oh, nancy are you there Co coaching oh i must be okay. pulling it out okay okay um what I will be doing, it, it's actually more of a group coaching, you know, first um, okay. beta of a program. It's not a program that's been fully developed. Right? I see. Okay. Yeah. So um, it depends on your list size. I mean, if you have an email list, even if it's 100 people, I would just email them about it and ask them. I would get feedback from them and then make a program based on their responses, right? Like, so you can survey them using Google Forms or something like that for free. It's a free form service. Um, and find out what yeah, they I'm want. I'm past that. I'm actually okay. ready to, to launch. Okay. I've been outlining. Okay. Well, um, yeah. Yeah. go ahead, Michael. No, I was going to say one of the things you can think about, Nancy, is with this group that you have, because it sounds like you have a, a, a small but connected group, mm -hmm. is maybe to take some of this pressure off of yourself, run a pilot program. Okay. Have right. this participants go through your program that you're thinking about as a pilot. And you don't have to put all the bells and whistles in the program in the pilot. You're actually testing your ideas with a test group. You could actually charge them a, a lower rate than you plan to do in the future, but you're then building people that will help you co-create the course. I think a lot of folks get held back because they get overwhelmed with all the steps of putting the course mm -hmm. together. But, but if you, I did it with my caregivers. I had a framework that I was mm -hmm. doing with the Caregiving Thrival Kit, but I ended up co-creating the course as I went along in the four modules okay with this core group of people now i had you know 50 some go through maybe you only have 10 maybe you only have eight but you're at least starting with that eight and they'll give you ideas and then you can build from there yeah. to to really go yeah that would yeah. Be okay so, so you would wait with your launch until you've done the beta program no i would do the launch no, no, no. along with it so open up a pilot but also okay. do it as a launch yeah. also do it as a launch get people as part of it but don't think that it what you're creating this one time is going to be what it is forever yeah. Right. No, that this, yeah, this is what I've learned. To me, this is kind of my beta. That's where I'm going with it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I've been confused about is to uh, just do the launch then with my current audience and not worry about a launch outward. Yeah, I wouldn't. Or, I mean, I would just do what's called an internal launch, you know, for okay. your following first, you know, a seed launch. Some people call it that. Um, and I've done this with many clients. You just start with your list and your social followings partners you're going to bring those i mean unless you have a partner that just loves you that will mm -hmm. that has an email list or something that's willing to share with you i mean some people just like you and they'll actually share you without giving them an affiliate cut if you have that i would look at that if you have okay. somebody that maybe is loves you and is interested in you maybe you could return a favor to them at some point um and maybe they have 100 emails too or i don't know how big is your list but um, maybe they have a few hundred emails or something. Those are more people that they can come to your launch. So I would gather up maybe two or three people if you have them. If you don't, just launch with what you have. 
get some okay. numbers. I don't know how, I mean, you don't have to share how big your list is, but I would just start with, with that. I would do a Jeff Walker style launch. You know, I don't know if okay. you've read the book launch. Yep. Have, you, have you read that? I would yep. just, I mean, really just, just create an early bird price point. Like, let's say maybe it's going to be, I don't know what the price is going to be on this, but if it's, you know, uh, going to be $300 later, make it a 197 or something. Tell them before you make it, put a sales page together or, and, and create three emails and, and then just um, warm them up in those emails towards the launch. You know how to do a launch, right? You do yep. a warm up yep. sequence, you have an open cart, you have it open for a few days and then you close cart, right? And, and you mm -hmm. use the closed cart dates to to drive a little little scarcity like either the price is going up right. or maybe or maybe have a bonus session with yourself that's included with the program one on one or something and it goes away at the end of the launch um but i would just start with that i mean no matter how big your list is you're not going to knock it out of the park in your first launch but you're going to get real feedback from the market that you can then do it again or take mm -hmm. it to partners you know um that's what I would do and make sure your emails um, give a little bit of value, but tell a story. Don't just overload them with content, like tell them, right. tell them stories, case studies, always foreshadow to the next email, always right. in the last email with foreshadowing the next one. Right. Um, but I would just do a Jeff Walker style launch to your list. It's low hanging fruit. It's easy and it can work. I mean, I did this with a client of mine. He had a list of 700 people. Um, he, we sold, we pre-sold, he didn't even have a course yet. We pre-sold it. For $197 to his 700 people, and he had a pretty good engaged 700 people, but he made five grand in his launch in five days, you know. Which, mm -hmm. um, so I would just start with that, you know, if that makes okay, sense. Okay, that that make, yeah, that makes perfect sense to me because I, I didn't want to, I haven't done anything more than just kind of outline, and even only the first modules yeah. are outlined because I'm not sure, you know, where it's going to go to. So I think yeah. I'm on the right wavelength. Yeah, okay. I would just. Just, just share, just create a sales page or, or a way to take payment. If no one buys it, then you know you're either your method. I would, I would try to change your offer then and do it again in a little bit, um, mm -hmm. you know, or change the angle a little bit or something. I don't know your market really, um, but it would be, it would depend on a few questions. But I, I, doing a little seed launch to test the idea just via email is the quickest and easiest way. You don't even need all the videos that Jeff uses necessarily. Right. As yeah. It's a very, you, very tight market. So yeah. Yeah. yeah it would. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. that's great. I just I love your advice. I'm I'm very um, um very glad to be part of your group. All right. Thank well, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much, Nancy, yeah. for stopping by. We love okay. having you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Well, Michael, we got any other questions? How you doing there? Yeah. Well, we're we're getting questions again about um uh uh Chris uh oops. We want to do that. Okay. Sorry. Sometimes things are not cooperative. I'm learning the lab uh, platform too as we go along here um, about the camera and stuff again. But Nancy um, may have asked a question here too. But uh, I just want to say in terms of camera lighting, because we get this again mentioned here earlier. Uh, we're both John and I are both a, 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 um, experienced Hangouts broadcasters. So the same equipment that we use for our Hangouts, we use, we're using now. And uh, basically, you don't have to go expensive. Logitech C920 HD camera, Audio Technica ATR2100, um, and lighting. It's really have good lighting that's facing you. I do have studio lights because I'm used to broadcasting on live stream webinars. Um, but again, uh, you just want to have you know lighting. What the most important thing for clear stream is, if you can, is be hardwired Ethernet connected rather than just depending on Wi-Fi. I think a lot of people that are broadcasting, they're not necessarily hardwire connected. And while we're broadcasting or blabbing or hanging out, people are, other people are around you. So if people are sharing your Wi-Fi and you know your spouse or your child is on Netflix or doing something else, well, that's gonna draw from your stream. So, so again, uh, <laughs> John sorry, Michael. The my, my, my ADD. So, I gotta beat Michael. Uh, okay. <laughs> sorry. All right. It's so funny. Uh, I'm not as competitive as John, so you could give him that. You could give him the props. So it's okay. fine. <laughs> um, um, but anyway, uh, so but it's really important. Be hardwire connected. It'll help. You know, I agree. And it also for those of you that are considering using webinars, audio is just as important as video. You really want to come cl through clear as you speak. Try to minimize distractions. In fact, um, 
typically in hangouts, we do it this way. I don't have anybody around me, but if you're going to be in an environment where there's going to be a lot of background noise, actually a headset old, you know, with the microphone will actually block out some of that other noise more than an open microphone or the earbuds will with the microphone. So just, that's just another tip in that area. All right. Sounds good. Yep. Oh, we got another one who wants to come on. Yeah, maybe we'll stay on for maybe another 15 minutes or so. Then I, we could probably wrap it up, grab lunch, you know, if you're okay with that. Uh, we got Stephanie. Absolutely. Hey, how are you? Huh? Hi, Stephanie. Um, I'm friends with both of you on Facebook. And I think Woo! you guys were at um, Nick Unsworth's event in December 2014. Yep. We were. We were. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. I'm on fire, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Did you have a question or you just wanted to try out Blab or? Um, no, I mean, I have, <laughs> um, I'm always up for learning. I just co-hosted a Blab. I do, I've been on Blab for, I don't know, 30 days or so. It's cool. pretty cool. So, um, I have a brick and mortar business. I have a wellness center. We do acupuncture, massage and facials. We also manufacture at our wellness center a line of herbal formulas for pets. We have 12 formulas. And um, how would you recommend, um, like, and I also, I'm a massage therapist. I do acupressure. I could do a webinar kind of thing on acupressure and health and things like that, but I wouldn't really know where to begin. Are you talking about attracting local people in your local market? Is that what you're saying? Um, not necessarily attracting local people for, you know, coming into the wellness center, but how to make money online, you know, selling products or giving information, you know, webinar, creating a webinar for aromatherapy, acupressure, mm -hmm. you know, teaching people self-care, things like that, you know? Yeah. EFT, what, what what type of audience? What type of audience do you currently have? Like social media? Are you do you have people following you on social media? I do Periscope. I have like sixty six Periscopes that I uh, you know I interview people in wellness or I you know getting acupuncture, getting a facial, about doing a you know a talk about one of our products, you know one of our pet formulas. You know I have all kinds of stuff, and then I put it on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, things like that. So, um, so you've done interviews with other people who are selling products as well. Have you done that? Um, I've interviewed not other people selling products, but I've interviewed like my doctor of naturopathy, who's like a healer. Okay. Um, I've interviewed him because I've recommended, like I re would recommend every single massage client that I see if they mm -hmm. have an injury especially chronic pain, I would recommend him. And so I interviewed him, like questions on what he does, his magic, because it's hard to explain to people what he does, because, you know, it's just yeah, weird. I got you. So, uh, I got you. Yeah, if, if you were on earlier in this webinar too, one of the things John brought up and, you know, really thinking about is like really before you start trying to sell a course online is what is the transformation you're going to bring to your clients, you know, that are going to consume your product or whatever it is that you're going to sell if you're going to do a course um, to think about what is the result mm -hmm. that they're going to get and then think about what your signature system is well, unless you are looking I, I to sell products. Product. I, I should okay. just something around the product. We manufacture a line of herbal formulas for pets. Boom. How do you, well, how would you create a, a webinar to, to, you know, for that? Cause I don't. Yeah. Well, find out what you want to teach about those products. Like find out from your audience what they want to learn about those products. So I would say, okay, I, I know I have these products. So let me, you know, pull people on Facebook or other social media platforms on Periscope say, Hey, I have these, what would you want to learn about them? And then, you know, come up with a webinar topic and then host a webinar, you know, yeah. try to get as many people as you can on it. And then at the end of it, sell those products. Then, I mean, that's one way you can do it. I mean, you're gonna, either way, you're going to have to build a brand online. You're going to have to build something. If, and if you want your brand to be those products, that's one thing. You know, it's interesting. Uh, my brand has been me. I, you know, I am my brand. I have Oasis Palisades as our, as our wellness center and it has its own look brand. But in social media, I am my brand. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, you'll need to get known for, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, if you just want to sell these products, 
uh, like a one-off thing, you could you could do that. You know, if you're if you're, it depends on your goal. Like if your goal is to build your own brand, playing the long game over time, I would think I would take some more. I don't know that you want to have your name just tied to these products, right? You're looking to no, do something no, 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 a little bigger. Yeah, because I the products are just one thing we manufacture. I do a massage, right. we do acupuncture, we do organic okay. facials, we have face products, we have frequency jewelry. It's it's very like you know spread. Okay. Too many well, well, yeah, and it might be a, a bit of, of needing to get narrow on what you're serving people and your framework, like Michael was talking about. You know, what are the major transformations you're you're giving these people? Start hosting webinars on that topic. Start gathering people from social media or finding partners who can do webinars with you, so that you can build a little bit of an email database that makes sense around the the offers you're going to be making. Because it, it takes that takes a little bit of time, but yeah, I mean. I mean, you could sell. It's about getting people on the webinars and being consistent across your brand. So you got to get clear on that. Um, otherwise, you're just trying to sell products as a one-off thing, and that's a really short game kind of thinking process. I think you know for that. So um, yeah, I, I, I would get clear on kind of you know what your overall brand you want to create. Um, you know is. And the other thing too, as you're getting clear in that, use your you have a local you know following obviously too because these yeah. things you're doing are very hands-on in fact i wish we if we were a virtual reality in the future perhaps your nice wonderful therapeutic hands will come through the screen and be able to relieve the shoulder <laughs> pain at time but uh but uh you know is to really think about um how can you capture some of those things that you're doing with your local audience that are your fans that are your customers that you're delivering transformation for and then even showcase some of that. But think about if you want to teach to a virtual audience, um, it has to be something, a transformation that you can deliver because your hands are not going to be available to go literally, you know, through the computer screen or through the, exactly. the smartphone screen. So, yeah. so I think give that, think about what you can, you, the brand will deliver. You personally are going to deliver the transformation and that build, but capitalize on that local audience. In fact, talk to the people that you're serving locally even too about what they see you delivering what you know a signature system come up with a signature system that's stephanie's that's mm -hmm. a delivering a transformation or result and then build the webinar around that mm -hmm. if that makes yeah. sense yeah i'm gonna have to tell a little bird so that i can rewatch this because it's <laughs> great information you guys are giving thank you your time i really am humbled uh, I don't want to take too much no. of it, so I'll let somebody else come on. <clears throat> okay. But how exciting. Um, I'm glad that uh, you guys are my Facebook friends and I get to follow you. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we appreciate well, we're that. Excited to have, we're excited to have you in our, in our uh, Facebook and virtual world as well. And thank you so much for coming and supporting our lab today. We very much right. appreciate it. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. All right, there we go. So, all right, well, I think, what do you think, Michael? Wrap it up here? We kind of been yeah, on. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I didn't see anybody else grabbing a seat. So, it's